Hey, Jules. Hello, Amy. How are you? I'm good. How are you? Oh, just great. Thank you so much for coming in. So, uh, yeah, if you would be willing to share a little bit of your story with us to let us know what you have found uh, with your way of eating. Tell us how you are eating so that for those who don't know, they have an idea of what you are eating and then what healing you have found in your journey. Okay. Um, well, let's see. Uh, I'm eating uh, about, I'd say 99% carnivore diet at the moment. Um, I eat mostly beef and eggs and butter and uh, some occasionally some bacon um, and all, uh, you know, all, all cuts of beef, steak, uh, ribeyes, uh, brisket, um, chuck, you know, pretty much everything. Um, I love all, 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 all beef pretty much. And, um, you know, for me, carnivore, you know, what got me interested in carnivore was really the mental health aspect of things. Um, you know, I, I had been suffering for 20 years from severe uh, bipolar one, um, you know, generalized anxiety, I'd have chronic depression. And so, you know, what spoke to me was, you know, the fact that, you know, some, some carnivores were talking openly about, you know, not only their disease, but how they, they were able to heal from their mental illness. And I thought that was incredible because, you know, in my last 10 years of, you know, participating in support groups and, um, you know, help leading them as well, I never heard that before. You know, I would, he I'd hear often people say, oh, I'm doing great, but usually they weren't and things would go really bad afterwards. And, and this was, you know, these were people that had been talking about it for years, I found out, like uh, Elle Amber O'Hearn, um, you know, talking about her experience. And I read, you know, I read as much as I could about her and kind of describing her experience. And I said, you know, I have to try this because at the time, you know, I, I hadn't been working for six years. I was uh, also, you know, physically handicapped as well as mentally handicapped at that point in my life where I just unable to even, you know, function on a daily basis. So, you know, it was really easy for me to say, well, you know, what do I have to lose? I had already accepted that, you know, about a month before starting carnivore that I was never going to heal, that my life was essentially over and that there was, there was no, you know, coming back from it. I just had to make peace with that. And then I find this thing and I try it. And I remember, you know, three weeks in, I'm sitting there eating my steak uh, with some butter. And I, I'm thinking, wait, when's the last time I had a negative thought? You know, or when's the last time I actually had like anxiety? And I just started like going through the list of my symptoms and realizing I just hadn't been, I haven't, hadn't felt them in a while. And I thought that was incredible. And I went, wow, you know, this is really something amazing that's happening that I never experienced. I mean, I had anxiety most, if not all of my life, like even as a kid and, you know, trouble sleeping. I couldn't, I could never fall asleep. Like my parents would read me a story. I wouldn't fall asleep during that story. That would keep me awake. I'd be thinking about it. And I just had trouble, you know, sleeping. It was, it, it was something that was really chronic, you know, with me my entire life. So, you know, I, I started sleeping well again, being able to fall asleep, not having to wait until my mind got tired, you know? And that was just, you know, that was really, that changed my life when I started this. And things only got better, you know, last, all of last year, I was mostly on crutches or a cane. I could barely walk, you know, I had to wear a brace on one of either foot because taking the wrong step going down, you know, two flights of stairs or walking 10 feet, I could injure myself, but I just wasn't coming back from it. It would take a month or two months to recover. And it was so, I was so afraid all the time that, you know, something else was going to break and I would just, you know, be completely handicapped. And, you know, then everything got better. You know, after three months on carnivore, I was able to go to Disneyland with my kids. I mean, I couldn't even go to my, you know, to the park with my kids, let alone Disneyland. And we walked around the park all day and I had energy. I didn't have anxiety. I had no paranoia. You know, all these things that had plagued me that had really made life impossible were just gone and I felt great. And yeah, I was still, you know, severely obese at the time, 
but you know, it, it didn't matter. I wasn't even concerned about that because I felt good. I knew that exercise would help with that. You know, the more I could walk, the more I could be active, the better I would feel. And things really just continued from there. So, you know, for me, it was a complete transformation of, you know, where my life was a year ago to where it is now. Now I've been carnivore for nine months straight. And, you know, it, it just keeps getting better and better. I have more energy. I have better concentration. I can work longer hours. I can work. I mean, just working in and of itself is amazing. Reading, I, I had to be able to, I used to love to read. That was my outlet. And I couldn't read for years because my brain, I just couldn't concentrate. I have to read the same page 10, you know, 12 times, just trying to make sense of it. And so all these things changed for me. And, you know, now with, you know, my work and, and getting back into, you know, working life, it's just been incredible. I, I, I absolutely love it. Okay. So there's so much in your story. Um, I know that you've gotten off of medications, like you said, off of crutches. Um, what do you think the biggest takeaway, if you could tell someone one thing about the carnivore diet, that what, how it's affected you the most, what would that one thing be? Oh, that's a, that's a difficult question. I would, I would say, you know, it saved my life. Mm. It absolutely saved my life. I was, I wanted to die. I, I imagined I didn't want to, I I wasn't trying to kill myself at the time, but I remember thinking, you know, if I got an accident or a bus hit me, I would be so happy that it wouldn't be my fault, you know, that I didn't have to suffer anymore, that I wasn't in constant pain and mental anguish. And, you know, now I don't have any of that and I want to live, you know, I want, I don't just want to live. I want to thrive. I, I spend all my time working and reading and writing and, it's incredible to be able to do these things that I hadn't been able to do since, you know, since really since 2008, you know, when I had, when I was, when I was originally diagnosed uh, with bipolar one, you know, I could, I could work for a bit, but always my brain would, you know, get tired and I would just shut down and I couldn't function. I, I couldn't function in a job. I couldn't function at school, you know, and that's kind of what, you know, made me focus on psychology after I dropped out of my master's program in uh, political science, because I mean, that's all I had. I I was trying to understand my disease, trying to understand why I was so messed up and I couldn't find answers. You know, I I, I tried the medication route. I did that for three solid years following, you know, every, every, you know, medication to the letter that my doctor prescribed and it didn't help. I was constantly depressed. I gained 200 pounds. On, 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 on Depa, Depamide, which is Depakote here in the United States. And it was just horrible. So, I mean, yeah, this, this has literally saved my life, you know, brought me back from the dead. Like I have a completely new lease on life and I am so grateful for this opportunity, you know, and I can't waste it. I can't, I can't look at this gift I've been given and say, oh, well, you know, I'll just go back to what I was doing. No, I got to do something. I, I've never been able to fulfill, you know, my mission or my, my, my dreams in life because of my disease. They just always stop me no matter how many times I tried. And now I can, you know, now I can, I can pursue them again. I can have dreams and I can actually see them being accomplished, you know, daily by the work I'm doing and by the people I'm, you know, contacting and, you know, improving their lives. And I think that's the best thing about being a carnivore coach is, you know, you meet one person and you help them, you change their life. And one person is enough to justify everything you've done to get to that point. I've heard so many people say that if I could help just one person, then it will have been worth it. And uh, I've also, I've heard that saying so many times, I don't want to kill myself, but I don't want to be here. I don't want to die. And when you're in that state, you honestly believe that if you were to die, the rest of the people around you would be better off as well. Yes. You you really truly believe that you are hurting other people and you are a detriment. And now that you're on the other side of that, you can look back and you can see exactly how many people your carnivore diet has affected because it hasn't just been you that's been affected. Who else has it affected in your life? I mean, it's affected my, my kids, my parents, 
you know, my wife, they're all carnivores now. And their life, I mean, you know, talk about, you know, my, my, my eldest, she had, she was borderline obese, you know, when, when she started and she's so strong. And so, you know, she's just thriving now. She's, the, she's lost all that weight. She's gained muscle and she loves to dance and having that amount of, you know, so much muscle makes her a great, powerful dancer. It's incredible to see. And my youngest, who was eating the same diet as her sister, who was underweight, you know, she's normalized. She's, she's, she's doing great. Their pediatrician, you know, can't really imagine, can't understand how they're doing so well. After one year, the, the one year checkup was incredible from the last time. And you see them in their, and when they, you know, their energy, when they play, I mean, it's just, it's just completely different. They have so much energy. They're so full of life. They're so happy. You know, they used to be sad for no reason and have these horrible mood swings. And now they're just stable like their father. You know, we get to go out, we get to play and we have fun and we don't stop. And none of us are, you know, feeling sad or depressed because of, you know, nothing going on. We, we, we are enjoying life and it's incredible. It's so, it's as, as a father, it's the best thing to see when your kids are doing so well and you've been able to be a part of that. It's just incredible. And now they get to keep you because yes. had you been able to continue on the path that you were on, as you said, you know, it saved your life. So yes, it, it, it would have changed their lives in so many ways if they had lost you. And now they get to keep you. Not only do they get to keep you, but a healthier, happier you and you have brought so much value to their lives. I love that you are now a carnivore coach because every pore of yours exudes the desire to help other people find their way in their journey and encourage them. And it's just been, it's been such an honor to get to work with you and get to know you and see you. Uh, so what, what are your plans for the future moving forward from here? You know, my, my focus, not by choice, has always been psychology and mental illness. And, you know, ever since I got sick, that's pretty much became my obsession, trying to understand it. And now what I've, what I've learned through, you know, Rivero, their coaching program and nutrition, it's completely changed the way I see mental illness. You know, mental illness oftentimes is nothing more than malnourishment people not getting the right amount of micronutrients, you know, not eating the right nutrient dense foods. And that causes so many problems that have a multiple, you know, so many symptoms are possible from that one problem of malnourishment. And when you see someone and you correct that malnourishment and you give them, you know, the most nutrient dense, you know, most vitamin filled foods in the world, their life, their health changes. And then not just mentally, but physically as well. And knowing that, I mean, I can't, I suffered for 20 years because of malnourishment, because my parents thought that a low fat, high carb diet was the healthiest diet in the world. And the lies that they were told, and they suffered along with me. And so now to be able to show other people that, you know, that's none of that's true, that you can eat and feel satiated and full and you know, eat amazing foods and be happy. Literally, makes it makes you happy by eating this way, because your brain can finally create enough serotonin because it has a substrate for that. I mean, all these things are just life changing. And I talk to everyone I meet, every 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 event I go to, to try to you know share this with people to explain that this is incredible. This is not just a, you know a diet. This is a way of life. This is this will change everything. And it, it has changed everything. And that's just what's so incredible about, you know, being a coach with Rivero is that it allows us to reach so many people in a way as a, you know, I was trained as a psychoanalyst. As a psychoanalyst, I can't do this. I could not, you know, preach nutrition or give nutritional advice to people, my clients, because I could lose my license. But as a coach, I have no license to lose in that area. I can tell people about the best practices, about what I've done, my experience, and 
it helps so many more people than I ever could as a one-on-one -on -one therapist. I am so inspired and I'm so excited to see where you go with this. It, um, it's hard. It's, it's hard to see people who are struggling so much and they, and they really kind of resist you and fight you on it. So that's, what's so amazing about this, the coaching space is that they come to you, they're ready. They generally have a pretty good why by that point in time, they're getting desperate and they're just looking for some shimmer of hope and our stories that we share on this podcast can help so many. I, uh, so you said 20 years was how long you were sick for when, how old were you when you got your diagnosis of bipolar? Well, I got my diagnosis, my first official diagnosis in 2008, but I had been seeing a psychiatrist since I was uh, 17. So it's actually been more than 20 years. Mm. Um, and at that time it was just, uh, you know, depression, um, uh, chronic depression. And, you know, based on my history now and after working, you know, with a, a therapist for a long time, I realized that it went, you know, it went back way further. So I tell people 20, you know, 20 plus years, but it was really, you know, probably since the age of seven, when I moved away from my grandparents who fed me a steady diet of sausage and bacon and eggs, which I was completely happy on as a child. And when I moved away from them and only ate, you know, high carb, low fat foods with margarine and seed oils, that's when my life completely changed. I gained an enormous amount of weight. You know, I, I, it made me anxious all the time. I, I became, I went from a extremely happy little boy to extremely timid and shy. And it just you know, like all these changes. So, you know, you know, I, I, if I, you know, I think about it, it was pro probably most of my life, you know, since the age of seven, that's when things really started to change for me because I, I mean, I couldn't even, I couldn't even bake in bacon at home. All we had was turkey bacon, which was this horrible process, you know, extruded, <laughs> nasty tasting food substance that had nothing to do with bacon. It should have been, it been, been called bacon. So, you know, for me, it was, you know, it's been a long, long time of suffering. And, you know, that's, that's what's really helped me to understand why this is so important and why this is so necessary for so many people, because so many people, so many of my peers have suffered for so long and with no hope, just like I, you know, just like I didn't have at the time and that I can, and they can see me. They can see the difference and they know it's not, you know, it's not just, oh, he's, he's, he's being manic. No, I'm consistent. I show up. I don't have bad days anymore. No matter what happens in my life, I can still show up and function. And that's something that, you know, for people like us who are neurodiverse, that doesn't happen that often. It's amazing how long it took them to get you your right diagnosis and how long it took for you to get bad enough to get your official diagnosis. And we used to be told all the time that bipolar is irreversible, even with medications, this is as good as you're going to get. Exactly. So were you ever on a medication that actually brought you relief that got you to a place where you could function? No, it, <laughs> every medication I ever took always pushed me down kept me in a depressed state. I would never get to a normal, you know, state, stable state. My stability was always in depression, which made life or working completely impossible, you know, because it was just, it was never, there was never a balance. And they explained it in such a way that, oh, these are mood stabilizers. They will keep you between here and here. And it's not true. Like I had manic episodes on mood stabilizers. So the idea that somehow these off-brand products were going to, you know, do the epileptic medications were going to do something for me for my bipolar, you know, it, it just didn't, it wasn't true. It didn't work. And my psychiatrist, I, you know, I, I know he meant well, I know he was, he was trying to help his patients, but I don't remember meeting one or any of them in my years of group that I found to, you know, be truly helped. And in a good place because of their medications, you know, they were surviving, but they definitely weren't living or thriving. And all it took was removing certain foods 
and replacing it with nutrient dense animal products. The inflammation caused by the food, <laughs> the food products, honestly, if it comes in a package, I, I don't even know that it should be called food. I think that they should be called food products. You know how on like American cheese, it says cheese product. Right. I think that's really what we should be calling almost everything in a package. <laughs> it should yeah. be a food product and they cause so much inflammation. It's hard to fathom that that is what caused your problems. It was nothing but those food products and providing the right food was your cure. Yeah. It, you know, it, it really, you know, the, the more I've read about, you know, how nutrition affects psychology, it, it really is just, you know, you're not getting the nutrients you need. You, you take away, I mean, human beings, if you take away one or two vitamins, we don't, we don't, we don't survive. We die. And if we're all getting low levels of a broad spectrum of micronutrients that we need to function, then it just doesn't work. And for, you know, people like myself who are considered neurodiverse, our brains require even more micronutrients, which would explain why in a family, if one person is bipolar and the others are fine, well, their brain has needed more nutrients than anyone else in the family, but they're eating the same foods and they're just not getting it. They're not, they're not, they're not, they're not getting the proper support for their mental health. And that changes everything. It's, 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 it, you know, the, I just, like I said, the idea of going back to private practice now, I, I couldn't do it. Just knowing that I could help people more by doing what I do now as a coach, by sharing information, sharing knowledge than I ever could trying to treat a symptom without first, you know, fixing the root cause. It's incredible to see when someone finds what works for them and that freedom that food can bring you to unlock you from your own brain, from your own body. You said you were on crutches. It wasn't yeah. just for you. It wasn't just mental. It was physical as well. And you see that so many times, so many people, you know, when they're malnourished, it's not just their brain that deteriorates, you know, it's their body as well. And over time, it just gets worse. And, you know, your, your, your body is smart. It prioritizes where it's going to send that little bit of nutrients it has. And so if it just doesn't have enough, it says, well, I guess you don't need your feet as much as your heart. So we're going to give all the nutrients to your heart because you need that, but mm -hmm. your feet and your bones, well, that's not as important. I mean, it, it, it is really a smart organism, but if we don't support it, if we don't let it get the proper amount of nutrition, it just can't function. It, it can't do what it's supposed to do. I, I mean, I've gotten so much stronger now. You know, I, I, I from going, being able, unable to walk last year to now, you know, going to the gym and pressing 540 pounds on a leg press. Like, that's just, I can't even, I haven't done that since I was, you know, in my 20s you know, let alone now at 39, like it's, it's, it seems impossible, but I'm doing it every day. I'm able to work out and build muscle and get stronger. And I feel amazing. And that's like the greatest feeling in the world. You brought up being malnourished and there's a lot of people who would assume anybody who is overweight is not malnourished because it goes against the logical thinking of, you know, move more, eat less, because obviously you have enough on you. But the problem is people who are underweight and the people who are overweight, they're all malnourished. It's just how they present. Right. I mean, and, you know, for me, I had an eating disorder from the age of 15. So I suffered from anorexia. I suffered from bulimia nervosa. And, you know, these things, they really destroy your body because you're, you're getting even less nutrients. But I remember the first time I, I skipped lunch that I actually felt better. You know, it wasn't like, oh, I'm, I'm trying to hurt myself. No, it wasn't that. I felt better by not eating the foods that were making me sick. I felt better when I threw up the foods that would have caused horrible damage after a binge. Like those things made me feel better. And since, you know, going carnivore, 
and eating these foods, I've never even had the thought or the inclination to try to throw up or try to purge. Like that's gone away. I mean, I thought that was that was going to be with me for the rest of my life because I had it since I was 15. And now it's it's gone. Now mm. I don't have my eating disorder and that I could eat till satiety and feel full and satisfied and not feel guilty and not feel horrible. It makes you wonder how much of our eating disorders are just linked to the foods we're eating that people with eating disorders perhaps are just more sensitive to the foods they're eating and the foods they're eating makes them sick. And so they don't want to put those in their body and they were, they fight and they resist and everyone tells them they're crazy. Everyone tells them they're sick. And yet you take someone and this, I've seen this firsthand with other people, you put them on a carnivore diet and all of a sudden their eating disorder symptoms are much less. They don't feel bad. They don't feel horrible about the food they're putting in their mouth. They're able to accept it far more. It's so hard to watch. Um, I have worked with a lot of doctors in my past and so many of them touted the, the plant-based eating. And I was told by the best well-meaning doctors that I would never get off of my medications because this is who I am genetically. This is just the roll of the dice and they don't see mental health on the same level as say diabetes. They don't see them as being connected in any form or fashion, but us in this low carb space are discovering that if both can be affected by the foods or food products that we are eating, then maybe there is more of a correlation and it's not just your genetics and the roll of the dice, but so much more than that, the inflammation from those food products affects us all in so many different ways. And, you know, as, as food and the quality of food has decreased over the years because of agricultural practices, you know, it makes sense that people who have a family history of like mental illness, like bipolar, their children would have a more severe illness, you know, as the generations go on because they're getting less and less nutrients in their daily diet. So of course you see people that perhaps were eccentric their great grandfather was eccentric. And the, today they're just completely unable to function because they have gotten less as people, you know, M Americans eat far less beef on average than they did 50 years ago. I think about what kind of effect that has had on the, you know, an entire nutritional intake of the population. You know, in, in my research and what I've read, 50% suffer from some sort of illness that could be described in the DSM-5. 50% of Americans. And then you, you could chalk that up to 80% if you take into account all the trauma caused by the taking care of or living with someone who is sick. That's a huge number. That's astronomical. And yet, you know, we don't talk about it. We don't talk about all the suffering that's going on, all the people whose lives have been completely destroyed by mental illness. It's some reason remains taboo. You know, and that's why I share my story every chance I get. I'm not ashamed anymore. It wasn't my fault. None of it was my fault. No, not, not at all. And accepting that um, honestly is one of the hardest things. As parents, we feel responsible for our children, for what we've done to our children. It wasn't your parents' fault either. They didn't know any better. They did what they thought was best because we're listening to what we're being told. And exactly. now critical thinking, I mean, go ahead. Know, both my parents are extremely intelligent. My father was a vice president of his company. My mother has her doctorate in pharmacy. These are not you know, people who can't read a label or can't understand science. But at the same time, they were completely handicapped because the information that they were given that was being taught to them was completely and utterly false. Yes. And then the medications that you were given to help fix your problems couldn't even come close. They, they did more damage. Yeah. Yeah. They did more damage to you than help. And that again, 
many of these doctors are well-meaning. They just don't know. They don't understand, which is why I'm so excited about looking towards the future of what this way of eating will be able to do for so many people. And the more people we reach, the more understanding there will become at really what kind of medicine food truly is. It is the best medicine with the least amount of, if any, side effects for most people. And so it is so incredible that you have found your path and your way forward and your freedom. And not only for you, but for your family and your children as well. So congratulations on your journey and how amazing it's going. And we cannot wait to hear more from you in the future. Thank you very much, Ava. It's a pleasure talking to you.